back to another episode of Close to Broke. Today, I want to quickly say sorry, I haven't posted in a week. And the reason being is quite honestly, I was a little burnt out. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to get some more hours in. So the week that I took off wasn't even really a week, but that's enough. That's enough for me to, uh, let's get back in the action. Let's go back to where they killed us last time here at the Commerce Casino. And uh, I don't know what else I really need to talk about besides those key points. Again, if you guys haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. And in today's episode, I have a massive, massive uh, surprise for you guys. So make sure to stay around because at the very end of the episode, there's an awesome, awesome thing that I want to you know, announce and show you guys. And it's uh, going to be worth the wait. So without further ado, let's hop into today's session. Let's go crush. And if not, if we get crushed, we'll, we'll be okay with that too. Let's just play some poker, man. Let's have some fun. So going off of what we just mentioned, I'm looking to have some fun. I'm looking to have a good time. And luckily, we get given a pretty decent hand. I look down at ace-jack offsuit here for middle position. There is a post here from what looks like the cutoff for the hijack for $10. I decide to bump up the price of poker to $45. Only the big blind decides to make the call, and we're going off to a flop. That comes deuce nine, king with two spades. When the action checks over to me, I decide to see bet here for $35. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call, and we're going off to a turn card that comes to five of hearts. This time, the opponent checks again. This is not a card that I feel like changes a whole lot besides the backdoor flush draw. It doesn't add any more straight draws. It doesn't add any more equity for any of these random holdings. So I want to bet a little bit on the larger size and then looking to overbet the river if I need to. I decide to bet $125 with every bad intention in my mind to go really big here on the river. I'm looking to go over the size of the pot if I get called, as my opponent can almost only have one pair at this juncture of the hand, I believe, with the way the hand's played out. Luckily, it won't come to that. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the fold, and we take down a nice little pot to get us in the right direction early on. In the very next hand, I pull out the blind straddle. Yes, this is the very next hand from the last hand we just won. I put the blind straddle on for $20. I'm having trouble, and I'm fumbling over the simple language that i have known for my entire life which is english for some reason anyways middle position raises to 60 dollars the big blind decides to make the call we look down at six four off suit it's a horrible hand the good thing is it doesn't interact with the small blinds calling range or what i believe the middle position's raising range to be so you know whatever we're gonna go ahead and be defending this we gotta defend when we put out that 20 dollars right anyways i decide to make the call we're going off to a flop that comes pretty reasonable as it comes 10 8 5 rainbow we flop ourselves a gut shot and when the action checks through luckily we turn an open ender as it comes at three there is a full rainbow out there and at this point with all the people checking around it's about time somebody puts money into the middle so i bet 75 dollars middle position goes into the think tank for a little bit before deciding to just make the call the big blind decides to make the fold and we're going off to a river hoping to improve in some fashion make a little bit of a luck for us drop a like in three two one to see if we can catch one of our outs the river comes a deuce of diamonds bink bank bonk oh my gosh this is a massive massive turn of events i was betting as a bluff as a semi bluff and now i'm able to bomb this river with a massive sizing as now we have the goods i decide to massively overbet here for 375 dollars I don't know exactly what my opponent has, but I'm definitely not targeting, I think, a hand like 8-7, really. I think more than likely I'm targeting a hand like Ace-10, Jack-10, some kind of weird hand that checked back the flop. And I think, honestly, he can even be checking back Aces or Kings on that flop texture and just making his hand into a check call. So if that's the case, I want to go massive here. And uh, I bet $375, and to my, honestly, to my complete surprise... My opponent almost instantly decides to make the call for that massive sizing. And we're able to take in a massive pot to get our session off on a fast, fast start. Maybe I'm on a little bit of a winner's high, but I mean, to say the very least, I am going at a thousand miles an hour. There's so much already happening. I haven't played in a while. The rush of poker, the rush that adrenaline is really in my veins right now, pumping through my blood. The cutoff decides to limp here. I look down at Jack-9 offsuit. The cutoff is definitely one of the weaker players at the table, so I want to be isolating against this opponent. 
I'm making $55 from the small blind. This is probably the bottom of my, you know, offsuit variety of isolation. Limp isolates, but anyways, I decide to isolate. The limper decides to make the call, and we're going off to a flop that comes 854 rainbow. I see bet for $30, which I've been doing against this exact opponent pretty often, going pretty small. And she decides to click it back to $65. Considering I do have two overs and definitely range advantage pre-flop, I'm going to go ahead and just make the call as a float here and maybe try to take the pot away against my opponent on certain runouts. The turn comes the Jin card as it comes the Ace of Diamonds. This is a wonderful card as it interacts almost solely with my range as opposed to my opponent's range. I doubt my opponent's going to have a hand like Ace-8, although it is possible, it's very unlikely that this Ace, like I said, interacts with their range as opposed to what will be significantly stronger for my range. If I'm calling with Jack High as a float, I'll definitely have Ace-King, Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack, every single Ace-X, all the wheel Aces. There's so many Aces that I have in my range, and when that's the case, I decide to lead out for $125 as a bluff, obviously, but definitely more credible for my range as opposed to my opponent's. My opponent is super flustered and annoyed at this, but inevitably decides to make the fold. Looks like I can't do anything wrong at this point, whether that's a good play or a bad play. I'm not too sure, but again, right now, the winner's tilt is going on, and I'm just playing fast and aggressive in every spot I can. This next hand, I'll go ahead and preface saying that I think I misplayed it and something that I'll later talk about talking to a coach about it. Anyways, we look down at King Queen here from the cutoff. I make it $35. It folds over to the small blind who's playing around 750 or something like that effective, which is sub 100 big blinds, which is honestly fairly surprising for this game. Usually, you know, people are playing at least 100 big blinds effective at 510 or at least at this game here at the Commerce. Anyways, he decides to three bet me to $120. When it folds over to me, I think in the offsuit of variety, I'd prefer to have this as a jam, as a bluff, as opposed to a flat. And the reason being, obviously, it just plays a little worse considering that I don't have a suited variety Broadway holding. Not only that, it's nice to have four bet bluffs and specifically hands that block kings and queens. Anyways, I think I'm lighting money on fire by just calling against a, a stack that's this shallow. Anyways, that is what I end up doing. I decide to just make the call. The flop comes 10 5 7 rainbow. The opponent decides to check it over to me, and again, I just don't have any credible hands, I think, on this board texture. It just doesn't interact with me a great deal, besides maybe if I have a hand like 10s or 7s. But in reality, it's just not really great for me, so I decide to check it back, hoping to improve by getting a jack, a king, or a queen to add some equity to our hand, or at least the opportunity to bluff at the hand. The turn comes none of that as it pairs the board as it comes a 5. It does bring a backdoor flush route that doesn't help us, like I said, in any bit or the slightest. Our opponent decides to bet for $100 going with a down bet. This is a pretty easy snap fold for me, but it's definitely something to think about whether I was, you know, going to win the hand or lose the hand. I do think that the best play would have been either folding pre-flop or jamming. Nah, we'll live and learn though. To be quite honest, to this point, this has been an unbelievably easy session. Not a lot of really tough spots to go over. And, you know, I won't complain. It, it feels good to not have to be put through the ringer as it's been feeling like that over the last couple months. Anyways, we look down at King Nine of Hearts after a middle position raised to $35. I decide to make the call. We're playing against that same opponent from the last hand. This time the flop comes Queen Queen Nine with two clubs out there. I decide to check it over to my opponent who decides to see bet pretty small here. I think about it for a little while. And considering that this board texture is going to be pretty good for his range, I don't want to overplay my hand and just, you know, raise here. So I decide to just make the call and the turn comes a five. I decide to check it over to him. He pretty instantly decides to check it back. The river comes another five. So now a really interesting board, as you guys can clearly see, it's queen, queen, nine, five, five. It starts off with me on this river. And I think that blocker betting is a pretty interesting play. Obviously, I'm almost never going to get raised, but I, I don't think that I want to be going anything bigger than a small bet to get called by ace highs or hands like pocket eights or sevens. So I decide to bet $25 looking to target a weaker pair or ace high holding and even king high sometimes. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call. We flip over our hand and it's good. Feels great to get some thin value. I feel like I've been completely locked in in today's session. Quickly taking a breather, walking around. I feel like I'm playing pretty well today. Uh, I'm also playing super aggressive. Um, 
yeah, just trying to spice things up, get a little aggressive. I obviously I think this is a really good table for me to make some money on. So let's see how we do. Feels pretty good so far. I'm gonna grab a quick drink because I'm very thirsty, and then we'll get right back into the session and hopefully have more good news to report. In the following hand, we finally pick up a premium we've been waiting this entire session for. The cutoff decides to raise to $40. We look down at Ace King Offsuit. I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the price of poker to $125 going right around 3x as i am in position we don't need to go too large here my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call after it folds back over to her we're going off to a flop that comes jack 10 5 with two diamonds considering i do have the ace of diamonds i don't mind making a c bet here but i don't need to go large i think going somewhere around 30 to 45 percent pot is very reasonable so i decide to down bet to 80 dollars and my opponent is not happy about it but ends up making the fold Feels nice to win a little pot there, and it feels good to win when you only have ace high. Although it did feel like with how we've been running today, a queen was definitely coming. Moving on to yet another hand, we find ourselves in the big blind. The button decides to limp for $10. The small blind completes, and we look down at 10-7 offsuit here in the big blind. Don't like this hand very much. Maybe feels suited. I'd be isolating, but it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and check my option when it's given to me. We're going off to a flop that comes pretty decent as it's king, queen, jack. We do flop ourselves an open ender, and it is a rainbow board texture. In these spots, I don't know what the optimal way to play is, so I just decided to throw out $15, a pretty reasonable size bet. And luckily, both opponents decide to make the call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes a five of spades. It does bring a backdoor flush draw out there. And when it checks over to me, I'm in between doing a couple of things, but I end up just c-betting here once again to $35. I don't know if this is good or bad, but I am holding a spade in my hand as a blocker. And when my opponent on the button decides to make the call, the small blind folds. I'm looking to improve in some capacity here on the river. It comes a deuce of spades, so the backdoor flush draw does complete. But I end up chickening out and checking here. I actually don't mind blasting off on this river. I just don't see my opponent have it greater than just one pair and very likely a hand like middling pair with an open ender or something like that, or maybe even a 10 themselves. And if that's the case, I'm just letting my opponent get away without making a tough decision on this river, especially against an opponent that has shown the propensity to make pretty nitty folds to this point. But I don't grab my cojones and I don't make the big play. I end up just checking it and my opponent waves a white flag, checking it back. My opponent shows queen eight. So pretty much what we mentioned is exactly what happened. It's unfortunate that although I saw the opportunity and I realized the opportunity wasn't there, I didn't take advantage of it. I don't know if my opponent would have called, but I know that the right play was to go ahead and bet a third barrel. Bear with me in this next hand as we're fumbling to get the camera going. Early position decides to limp, middle position limps as well, and I'm here in the cutoff. I decide to isolate a $50 with jack eight of spades. Both my opponents make the call, and we're going off to a flop that comes 10-9 deuce with two clubs. When the action checks over to me, I decide to c-bet for $35 here. I want to go a little bit on the smaller side. I am blocking most of the straight draws that are available. So the only thing I'm really scared about, I think, at this point is a flush draw, and everything else is, like, you know, pretty up in the air. The only thing that I will say is that my, I, I, I like what I'm doing with my bet sizing here, but I don't think this is the right sizing for this board texture. The only reason I went this small is because I am blocking the straight draws with a jack, but more than likely I should be going around 75% pot. The turn card comes the eight of diamonds as it does bring one of the straight draws out there. The other thing it does is give me some equity by giving me a pair. When it checks over to me, I don't want to bloat the size of the pod, considering I don't want to get blown off my equity. So I end up checking it back, playing a little bit safer. And my opponents seem pretty happy with that. And we're going off to a free river that comes the seven of diamonds. This is what effectively feels like the effective nuts for me. And when the opponent does something really weird here from early position and leads out for $100, Middle position folds and it's on me, and I use this as a merge play. I end up making a pretty crazy, wacky play and jamming here. I realize that I don't have the nuts. Like I said, it feels like the effective nuts, but I want to target random two pair holdings as well as the dummy end of the straight. And more importantly, there is an off chance that if I jam, I can get a jack to fold. And if I can ever make that a play that is possible or feasible, I think that, you know, I've got to take advantage of that. If I can get a chop to fold, that's amazing. 
And if I can get lesser hands to call, then that that's amazing as well. Anyways, my opponent only has about $450 behind. So when it's on me, I make the big jam as this crazy play. Hopefully it works out. My opponent goes into the tank before inevitably throwing her cards away in utter disappointment and frustration. I did see an ace, a red ace of some sort flash as she was folding her hand. So, you know, probably not anything better than just one pair. I doubt she had an ace jack and just limp for middle position. But, you know, as it goes, and uh, that's going to do it for today's session. But stay tuned because there's a big announcement at the end of the video as well as the totals. Did me wrong. I can't leave. And just like that, today's session has come to a close. A couple things we want to get into, obviously, before I show you guys that sick announcement at the very end of all this. Just first and foremost, um, that's the poker I expect to play. Obviously, we got hit by the deck in the biggest part of the night in that massive overbet that we had there with 6-4 off. But, like, we just kind of ran over the table. Nothing really crazy. The only spot that was kind of close and i'm probably gonna talk to some coaches about is the spot with um king queen offsuit put off versus small blind when the small blind didn't even have 100 big blinds effective anyways give you guys the totals for today we freaking i don't even know how many plans we played today but we won like 99 percent of them the only hand that i lost was the king queen hand but we ended up into the game for 1500 so didn't need to add on whatsoever and we were out for 2590 that is a win just shy of $1,100 in a pretty quick little session. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog as always. And drum roll, please. I'm going to run the trailer now, but this is The Dream. So the documentary I worked on last year's WSOP for the giveaway winners for that year. We're doing the same thing this year, by the way, guys, as you guys know. So if you haven't already, please send a video submission. There's still a ton of, of opportunity out there. We're about a month out from my final decisions. The Airbnb is already booked. It's a great time, but we're still looking for a couple more people to sponsor to have come down to the trip. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to run the documentary trailer now. I hope you guys enjoy, and after uh, and after that, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. And I'll miss you guys very much, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. I just know that I am always going to be an underdog in life, and I'm just so grateful for this opportunity to be part of this team. And no matter what happens, I know that it's a blessing to just be here. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to become a winner. And even if I'm not, it, I'm a winner just because I'm here. I meet some good people. I get to go have fun, do what I love. And poker is always going to be my passion. And now that I'm here, this dream is my passion. My goal for the whole dream experience is honestly to make a deep run in this tournament. Um, as awesome as it would be to like, dream about like making the fine table and winning, even making a deep run, I understand that you, that variance has to play favorably for you in so many positions. But I'm just really hoping that I can just make a deep run, just for the financial compensation, just to get myself set up and established in Vegas, and also just for the self-affirmation that this is a career that's worthwhile pursuing, not just a pie-in-the-sky dream. When you think of the World Series of Poker, do you think Phil Helmuth? Daniel Negreanu, big name after big name after big name. Um, but occasionally you'll see people show up at the final table or like a bracelet winner. Like you kind of look at Rampage and you're just like, why not? Like he was an underdog going into that event. Before he had a vlog, he was playing 1-3, sometimes 2-5. You know, you, you just kind of think like, why not me? Like the beautiful thing about an underdog story is that you take a person like me that's a college student that has a few thousand dollars to their name because of poker. Like, I'm given an opportunity where I can't afford to book a ticket, a hotel, fire like at will at a $500 tournament. Like, you know, I, I can't afford to go do that. So for me to be able to be there, it's just, it's a testament to an underdog story. Like, like why not root for the guy that's not supposed to be at that final table, that's not supposed to be at the Thunderdome, that's not supposed to be one that's stacking Phil Hellmuth and sending him off uh, <laughs> to the doors, just raging in a fit, you know. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be the one that does that. But the beautiful thing about poker is there is luck involved, and with that, like anybody can take it down. You look at Money Maker.
who cares? Why not? Let's do it.